by the time we got to the third film, we were struggling with how to make it different from the first two. I really wanted Indiana Jones in, in the third, what I thought was going to be the final installment of the Indiana Jones series, to, Indy to go after an antiquity more rare than the Shankar Stones or the Lost Ark of the Covenant. I wanted him to go after his own father. And that was going to be his rescue mission. That was going to be the antiquity that he retrieves. Junior? Yes, sir. It is you, Junior. Don't call me that, please. By putting the father and son together, it lent itself more toward a humorous uh, portrayal of the film. Dr. Jones. Yes. yes. And I think that was one of the things, since we've been so dark with the uh, Temple of Doom, that we really wanted to go in the opposite direction and make this one lighter than uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. 11 o'clock! 11 o'clock! What happened at 11 o'clock? It's a very contentious relationship based on, you know, um, uh, a childhood where the, it was the father who was the adventurer explorer and who was always leaving the kid at home. It represents, uh, the, I think, a typical father-son relationship. And not unlike my father and myself in real life, the fact that my dad and I had a, had a tremendous coming together years after I moved out of the house because school was over and I could live on my own. And so in a sense that Indy and his father kind of follow a very similar curve as m me and my dad. Did I ever tell you to eat up, go to bed, wash your ears, do your homework? No, I respected your privacy, and I taught you self-reliance. What you taught me was that I was less important to you than people who'd been dead for 500 years in another country, and I learned it so well that we've hardly spoken for 20 years. You left just when you were becoming interesting. Who could intimidate Harrison Ford? Not some English character actor from the Royal Shakespeare Company, but Sean Connery is Harrison Ford's match, and he's the only person I can imagine on the planet Earth to play Indiana Jones' father. The James Bond film was kind of the father of the Indiana Jones films, because that's how Steve and I first started talking about it, was that he wanted to do a James Bond film. To use James Bond as the father of Indiana Jones, it seemed like the perfect, you know, outside of the real movie, uh, ironic humor. Dad! Oh, Dad! Oh, Dad! Ah! Head for the fireplace! Oh. I loved working with Sean. I thought he was the perfect foil. He brought great quality and depth to that character. I suddenly remembered my Charlemagne. Let my armies be the rocks and the trees and the birds in the sky. Uh, I kept thinking about what was Indiana Jones like as a young man. I mean, Stephen admired River Phoenix's work so that uh, he immediately wanted him to play the, the young Indiana Jones. When I met him, he was very much looked like Harrison as a younger, younger, younger guy. I just added the scar on River's chin and was able to lay pipe by, by letting the whip, when he tries to keep the lion back, the whip comes back and cuts his chin so we could, we could, we could source the, the scar. Well, first of all, I loved uh, River, and I visited the set when his part of the movie was shot. I thought it was great casting. And that was always fun, because it was really fun sort of having a chance to do a prequel inside of a sequel, or inside of a continuing adventure. Oh, look at that. The, the man who made the greatest impression on Indy was not his father, who was a very good man. But almost as a counter-reaction to the good man his father was, he had found a, a, a bad man and kind of took the idea of the hat and the leather jacket from him. It doesn't mean you have to like it. And so when I see Indy now in his leather jacket and his fedora, I think that that's a very strong statement he's made against how he was treated by his own father. We wanted a, a heroine in The Last Crusade, again, who was different. In this case, the idea of making her the villain. Someone who could be a terrific deceiver, you know, to be a love interest for Indiana Jones, who turns into his worst enemy. Is that what you think of me? I believe in the Grail, not the swastika. You stood up to be countered with the enemy of everything that the Grail stands for. Who gives a damn what you think? You do! <laughs> All I have to do is squeeze. All I have to do is scream. It was fun to be able to play with a, 
a kind of love story between two enemies. Who then turns into an ally at the very end and, and, and tragically is, 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 you know, is overcome by greed, which is something that George and I always giggle about. You know, let the greedy perish, let them fall into the, the abyss. Give me your hand, give me your other hand! <laughs> well, Allison brought the necessary complication to the character, uh, giving uh, us the opportunity yeah. to see the, the good and bad side and to believe both of them. It was a tricky part to play. I think she did uh, a wonderful job of it. Papers, please. Papers. Of course. <laughs> Run. Yes. Papers, I've got it here. <laughs> Just finished reading it myself. I had originally offered to Danny DeVito to play Sala in Raiders of the Lost Ark, and then, and then Danny couldn't do it. It turned out he couldn't do it, but he was my first choice for Sala. I found John Rhys Davies, who was a brilliant Shakespearean actor, ha has a, almost a Pavarotti quality about him, and a just a wonderful sense of humor, just a great laugh, <laughs> a great spirit. You know, indie, you know, that sort of thing. And, and, and you want to hug the guy, and, and I just thought he was perfect to play Sala. John Rhys Davies is a, a terrific actor, um, brought real scale and, uh, and humor to that part. It's a very important part, a very important relationship with Indiana Jones. Oh, rats. Well, you say, in the, in the first film we had snakes, in the second film we had bugs, in the third film we decided what, what else is left. So once you, you find a successful kind of a of, of, a, of, a, of a series, the audiences start to make demands on you. They start to say, okay, where's the equivalent of the snakes from the first movie? Okay, you had the bugs in the second movie, that was like the snakes, so what do you do now for the third movie? You had snakes, you had bugs, now you're gonna give us rats, <laughs> okay. We called it our phobia scene, we sort of have the, the one scene with the, the critters that nobody likes to be around. I had had some experience with rats. I raised um, uh, lab rats uh, when I was about 15, 16 years old. So I was used to handling rats and, and working, uh, being around them. I wasn't put off by it. The smell got to be a little weird after a while. We were right on the edge of a health issue with the, with the rats and the water and the rat feces and all the rest of it. It became a, a, a bit of a, of a murky soup to step into that water. But everyone came through it fine, nobody got sick. Of all th three films, Last Crusade was the one film that came off without a hitch. You know, I storyboard all these movies, and uh, in those days I pretty much stuck to the storyboards. The entire tank chase was verbatim what the storyboards were. Yeah. I sat down and I, without a, really a screenplay to go by I, st I did about, I don't know, 500 storyboards and made up the entire tank chase on paper in, in drawings, like a comic book. <laughs> and then we simply looked at each storyboard and wrote the screenplay to match the storyboards. <laughs> how much fun it was for me and how uncomfortable it was for Sean. I think the motorcycle sidecar scenes were, were great fun to shoot. Sean had to suffer uh, being stuffed into the sidecar and driven at a great rate of speed over mountain trails. And <laughs> he was great about it, actually. Terrific. We had fun. <laughs> My favorite moments are the, the the relationship between father and son. I mean, there's a lot of very good scenes. I think the one in the castle, you know, where uh, Indy rescues him for the first time is is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Dead end. There's gotta be a, a secret door, a passageway from I find that if I just sit down and think... Uh... <laughs> Dad! <laughs> solution presents itself. You come out of the gate in like a thoroughbred with Act 1, which is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Then you got a really dark Act 2, which was Temple of Doom. Then you've got the rousing finish, which was Last Crusade. But I, I really think that we intend to do a fourth one. One hopes so. Well, we've gotten a couple scripts that we've worked out, and it's really a matter of getting Harrison and 
and uh, Stephen to agree on a script. We've done three fairly good stories, and I just don't want uh, the fourth Indiana Jones film to leave a bad taste in anyone's mouth. So I'm being a little more, and George and Harrison, we're all being a little more uh, uh, prejudicial about what the fourth movie will be like. Well, I'm not sure I'd give out the story at this point, but uh, um, we have a script. It's all finished.